This video is brought to you by Blessed Be God Boutique, maker of Catholic fashionable apparel, handmade accessories, and more. There's a pervasive error in our time that the church can change because it's a human institution, a human institution guided by the Holy Ghost. That's an error. The church is a divine institution. It is the mystical body of Christ, and Christ is the head of the church. The church is run by human ministers who can be guided by the Holy Ghost in key matters if they so wish, and the Holy Ghost protects the mystical body of Christ from falling into error. History has shown us that the institution and the mystical body are not always one and the same thing, and we have an object lesson in that today coming from the German bishops and a nun who's offering some constructive critiquing of them, and it serves as an object lesson for those of us outside of Germany who are watching similar movements take shape in the church in America, Australia, and other places. Movements that want the church to change its formal, unchangeable teachings on all manner of things that the secular world accepts and desires. So let's have a look at this story today and see what the errors look like and where they lead. The German Synodal Way is an absolute dumpster fire of schism and heresy, the two of which are always linked. One does not go into schism by keeping the faith, even if you have to take extraordinary means to preserve the faith. Schism and heresy, or the rejection of the moral authority of the church, almost always are linked together, as it is in the church in Germany, which is in a de facto state of schism. Observers are noting that this has become obvious to anyone watching. From cath.net, we get this account of the testimony of a German nun who now resides in Sweden, and her take on the German synod. The synod, she tells us, is an error because it forgets the divine origins of the church, which we as those Catholics who resist such attempts to foist secular changes on the church must never forget ourselves, that the church is a divine work, not a work of human hands. Quote, what we in the German church have to understand again is that a bishop did not receive his office from the congregation, but from the apostles and thus ultimately from Christ. The church is not a religious association that creates any offices for itself, but a foundation of Jesus Christ. Christiana Ramps, OSB, carefully stated this. Based on this, she explains on her blog, on the website of the Marian Donc Benedictine Abbey, that this means, however, that this visible church, which we often find so annoying, provocative, or petty-minded, is the object of our faith. The church is not a human work, but the church of Christ. Nevertheless, at the same time, it is also naive. Everything in the church can be directly traced back to the earthly Jesus. Of course, there is development in the church, but above all, there is the Holy Spirit, who guides the church and lets it stand firm in faith for all time. And I am convinced also in our time." End quote. For those of you who frequently comment that they're fending off despair and don't know what to do in the face of an obvious apostasy happening in the church, her advice is the best. Remember the divine origins of the church. And if you remember that you know how this story will play out eventually, if you remember its divine origins, God chose to have us live in this time for a reason known only to him. So do not let despair take you out of the church. That would be helping the modernists achieve their goals. Stand up to them, preserve the faith, and remember, the emperor has no clothes. If the stories coming out of the church in Germany sound too incredible to be true, well, the nun has something to say about that. And I invoke the emperor's new clothes for a reason. Quote, a Swedish priest asked her in a conversation, she reports in the blog post, quote, where everything we have heard from the German church was true or not, I can only confirm that it is true, she says. With reference to Anderson's fairy tale, The Emperor's New Clothes, she states, In Germany, we are like this emperor and they cheat him because we think we could reinvent reality and language. But at some point, a small child will come and call out, there's nothing behind it. But we'll probably just keep walking like the emperor, end quote. Yeah, most anyone with the faith can see that the German bishops are a hot mess right now, to such a point that there is a slight chance they'll reach too far too fast for even Francis. We'll have to wait and see how the German synod and the broader synod of synodality plays out to know for sure. Apparently, the church in Germany is in such dire straits that church officials in that country are actually overtly helping Catholics leave the Catholic church, if you can believe that. From cath.net, we get this headline, Diocese of Limburg. I have to get out of this church. Advertisements for leaving the church. 
Diocese of Limburg gives the ex-Catholic and ex-Vicar General Andreas Sturm of KEB Frankfurt an official Catholic stage on the diocese's website. The Diocese of Limburg is featured on its own website, a website run by angry former members of our faith that provides info on how to leave the church. This is advertised on the official Limburg Diocese website. Charming, right? And that cannot be a mistake. I think it just shows that the bishops of Germany don't care about the salvation of souls or the state of the church more broadly, that they are perfectly content to run the church into the ground in Germany, all in the name of ecumenical dialogue. According to that thinking, dare we hope all men are saved, right? From the article, quote, I have to get out of this church. Under this title, the Catholic Adult Education Frankfurt, KEB, invites you to an online conversation with Andreas Sturm, who recently joined the Old Catholics. The invitation is easy to find on the website of the Diocese of Limburg, whose Bishop George Botzing is also the chairman of the German Bishops' Conference. Sturm is described verbatim on the website as follows, quote, As vicar general in Speyer, he was one of the most powerful churchmen in Germany and increasingly became the face of a church capable of reform. He bravely took a stand on issues such as the blessings of James Martin Parings and celibacy, a beacon of hope, but who even now has no more hope and therefore acts consistently. Andreas Sturm leaves the church because he can no longer believe in change. He speaks from the soul of hundreds of thousands. In an online conversation with the Catholic Adult Education Frankfurt, the former vicar general presents his book, I Have to Get Out of This Church Because I Want to Stay Human. Criticism of Sturm's decision to leave the Roman Catholic Church or of his positions that do not agree with the Catholic magisterium cannot be found in the press article from the Diocese of Limburg, end quote. In other words, when they actually have his website listed there, they don't at least critique what he's doing. This is a former Catholic priest who joined a hyper-modernist schismatic group who does have valid orders, but has tossed out the window most of the church's moral and authoritative teaching. So quite literally, the Diocese of Limburg is advertising for how to join a schismatic sect if you want to, and they're doing it on their own website. That's an endorsement, if I've ever seen one. But much of this is the fruit born of the so-called synodal path in Germany, and we learned some time ago that the Germans were paying a hefty tax bill for this new springtime in the Church of the New Advent in Germany. From cath.net, we get this headline. Media, 6 million euros in church taxes for synodal path. I've reported on this before, but I think it bears sort of revisiting here. That so far the German church has spent 6 million euros to remake the church in that country into the image and likeness of the world. And we remember who the Lord of the world is, right? So far in 2022, they spent nearly 2 million euros, which means that cost will go up before their synod is wrapped up. I began this with some encouraging words from a German nun living in Sweden about the program of the German bishops and how they are like the emperor in the allegory of the emperor's new clothes. Now I'll wrap this up with some encouraging words from the controversial Archbishop Lefebvre, who in 1980 at an address in Venice described the state of the church in this way. Quote, how are things going in the church today? Ask His Grace Monsignor Pintaneo, former chaplain to the armed forces, who has made a detailed report on the present conditions of the Italian seminaries. A disaster, a real disaster. How many seminaries have been sold or closed? The seminary of Turin with 300 places, empty. And how many others have you seen closed in your own dioceses? So then surely something is wrong in the church because if there are no longer any seminaries, there will be in the future no more priests. Thus, there will no longer be the holy sacrifice of the Mass. What will become of the Church? All this is unbelievable. They have changed. Yes, they have changed. But why? They have done this, of course, with the idea of saving the Church, of doing something new. Before the Council, there was a real decrease of fervor, and therefore they thought that by changing, the Church would become more alive. But one cannot change what Jesus Christ has established. The holy sacrifice of the Mass, the sacraments, the creed, our catechism, the sacred scripture, all come from Jesus Christ. To change them is to change the establishment of Jesus Christ. Impossible. One cannot say that the church has been mistaken. If something is wrong, one must look for the reason somewhere, but not in the church. They also say that the church must change as modern man changes, that as man has a new way of life, so too the church must have another doctrine, a new mass, new sacraments, a new catechism, new seminaries. And in this way, everything has gone to ruin. Everything has been ruined. The church is not responsible. It is not the church, but rather the priests who are responsible for the deterioration of Catholicism. 
Pope St. Pius X, the Holy Patriarch of Venice, in the first pages of his, his encyclical, Pascendi, writes that already in his time there were errors and heresies, not outside but inside the church. Within the church, not only among the laity, but more to the point, among the priests. St. Pius X saw these enemies from the very beginning of this century. Today we can add that if St. Pius X were still alive, he would see them not only amongst the priests, but amongst the bishops and cardinals as well. It is certain, unfortunately, that there are even some cardinals who are diffusing error. End quote. Neither the SSPX nor Archbishop Lefebvre are or were schismatic. One of the tendencies of schismatic groups is to reject or attempt to modify the teachings of the church, especially on the non-negotiables. This is why Andreas Sturm left the church for that particular group calling itself the Old Catholics, who are one of the most modernist progressive schismatic groups in existence, despite their having valid holy orders, even if they've been stolen from the church. You don't go into schism by resisting an orthodox change. The real schismatics here are the German prelates and priests who are pushing this program in Germany, as are the laity who are helping them. It's why so many prelates and priests from around the world have tried to intervene in the German synodal way to talk some sense into Bishop Botzing and the others who are leading the church in Germany into schism. The problem is that Francis himself has endorsed their program, which leaves some, un some rather obvious questions unstated. What do you think about this? Are the German bishops already in schism? Was their placing of that schismatic former priest website on the official diocesan website of Lindbergh an endorsement of what he's doing? Was it a warning to observers that they'll join him and take church property with them if they don't get their way? Let me know what you think of all this in the comments, please. Like and subscribe if you haven't. It really does help, as does sharing these videos on social media. Our hosts seem to favor that these days. As always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.